in today's video we will be talking about reorganization and takeover okay now first of all let us understand the difference between reorganization and takeover uh, take and then we will look at the tax implication now if i talk about reorganization so let's suppose company they have different variety of shares like they have got ordinary shares preference shares then redeemable preference shares irredeemable shares etc okay so there are many classification of uh, shares but the most retailable is ordinary shares okay now let's suppose i have purchased a redeemable preference shares of a company okay let's suppose let's take an example let's say mr a have purchased 20000 preference shares of company a with okay, company x okay now obviously on these uh, redeemable preference shares company they will pay you interest right they will pay you interest let's suppose they will pay you interest for the next five years okay and then after five years they will purchase those shares from you okay they will pay you the principal amount now let's suppose after five years mr a visited a company and asked them to purchase the shares as per the agreement right because there was an agreement between you and the company in day one right that until five years the company will keep on paying you the interest and after five years they will purchase the shares from you okay but let's suppose company was facing some liquidity issues so they're not purchasing the shares from you. okay they said that we can't purchase the shares right now because we are facing some liquidity issue but they have given you two options okay they have given mr a two options now option one in option one company is saying that if you want you can extend the contract okay extend the contract for next three years okay although the contract was supposed to end after five years right but they are saying that uh, we can extend the contract for the next three years uh, and obviously why will uh, mr a want to extend a contract what benefit will he receive so the company they said that we will increase the interest percentage okay they said that they will increase the interest percentage okay and then after three years they will uh, repurchase the shares okay they will purchase the shares from mr a so that is option number one okay then option number two now in option number two uh, the company they said that you can take twenty five thousand ordinary shares of the company instead of those preference shares so right now mr a is having twenty thousand preference shares right so company is saying that instead of those you can take twenty five thousand ordinary shares from us okay so you will give those twenty thousand shares to the company and company will give you twenty five thousand ordinary shares now let's suppose mr a has opted option number two okay he want to go for option number two so it means now mr a will give those twenty thousand preference shares to the company and he will take twenty five thousand ordinary shares now can i say that in this exchange no cash is involved right no cash is involved okay so in the future if mr a dispose of the shares so from the disposal proceed he will minus the cost right he will minus the cost and that is how we compute again right i will take the dp from the dp i will minus the cost so that is how you will going to find out that how much chargeable gain or how much uh, loss uh, uh, did he make right so but the point is that over here in this exchange no cash was involved so in the future if we dispose the shares so from the dp we have to minus the cost so the question is which cost will he deduct okay which cost uh, will he deduct because he has not purchased the shares right but in fact they were transferred okay 
so basically the original cost will be deducted okay the original cost will be deducted okay now let's suppose mr a has only incurred an outflow of 40000 okay he has only incurred an outflow of 40000 okay let's suppose he purchased those 20000 preference shares for 40000 Okay, now he has given those preference shares to the company and now he has those 25,000 ordinary shares with him. Okay, so this 40,000, this 40,000 will now become the cost of 25,000 ordinary shares. Okay, so the original cost will be transferred. Now, same goes with the takeover. So this was reorganization, right? Okay, now same goes with the takeover. Now, let's suppose, for example, Let's say Mr. A purchased 30,000 shares, okay, ordinary shares for 50,000 from ABC Limited. Okay. Now, after some time, this ABC Limited this was taken over by xyz company okay so after some time this xyz has taken over abc limited okay so now when the takeover will take place okay when uh, the takeover will take place so the shares of abc limited they will be of no use they will be cancelled out right they will be cancelled out okay but basically uh, it is a takeover rule that whenever a company acquires another company so they have to pay a consideration to the existing shareholder that is a takeover rule right? whenever a takeover takes place so uh, the company uh, they uh, uh, the whenever a company is acquiring another company so they have to pay consideration to the existing shareholder now that consideration could be in the form of cash it could be in the form of shares okay it could be in the form of debentures okay so that will depend upon the agreement now let's suppose that this xyz limited okay they will give okay, this xyz limited will give two shares in exchange of one share okay to the existing shareholder okay they will give you two shares in exchange of one share okay so it means if i have one share so now again start they will give me two share so in this scenario mr a he was having thirty thousand shares right thirty thousand shares so it means uh, now how much is uh, what is the ratio two is to one right so it means he will receive sixty thousand shares right he will be receiving sixty thousand shares okay now again in this transaction no cash is involved right there was no outflow of cash so can i say that the cost of sixty thousand shares will be the same which was for 30,000 share right that is 50,000 right so if I, if you ask me that what will be the cost of these 60,000 shares I will say that it will be the same which was for 30,000 shares that is it will be 50,000 so original cost will be transferred okay so in the future if Mr. A dispose of these shares so from the DP, he will be deducting the original cost of 50,000. Now, this is a simple case. Okay, this is just a simple case. Now, in this uh, scenario, basically only one consideration was involved. Right? You were just receiving the shares from the uh, company. Okay? But it could be uh, in the exam, maybe there might be a complex case as well. 
okay maybe over here you were just receiving the shares so maybe in the exam you might be receiving shares plus you might be receiving some cash as well okay and even in the shares maybe it is possible that you might be receiving some of some of the ordinary shares plus you might be receiving some of the preference shares okay so now how to deal with such a scenario so let's see now let's suppose i'm having 40000 shares i have 40000 shares of pink limited okay i have 40000 shares of pink limited now let's suppose after some time this pink limited this was taken over by white limited okay so this pink limited this was taken over by white limited okay so i have got how many shares 40000 shares of pink limited which i purchased for let's suppose 70000 pound okay so now white limited is purchasing pink limited so it means the shares of pink limited they will be of no use right they will be of no use now this white limited obviously they will give some consideration to the existing shareholders right now let's suppose they are saying that we will give you two ordinary shares okay and one preference shares now the market value of ordinary share is 5 pound per share and the market value of preference share is 8 pound per share okay so over here uh, previously what we did was that we uh, we said that uh, the original cost will be uh, uh, will now become the cost of new shares right but over here there is a problem right over here we are receiving two type of shares i'm receiving ordinary shares plus i'm also receiving preference shares so the, so the question is how do i allocate the cost okay how do i allocate the cost Okay, because there will be uh, there will be an issue right over the allocation of cost okay because ordinary share is different its par value is different right its purchase its sale all of that is different same goes with the preference shares so i cannot combine them and then sell them that is not possible right okay because uh, the classification is different okay so the disposal of these shares will be different okay now basically over here i originally purchased 40000 shares for 70000 and in exchange of these shares i'm getting two ordinary shares and one preference shares okay now the cost of these will also be for uh, 70000 okay the cost of these will also be 70000 but I have to see, I have to now allocate the cost between the ordinary share and preference shares because I cannot combine them together and sell them. That is the main problem. I will sell them separately. So that is why we need to allocate the cost. Okay, so I have to see that how much cost belongs to the ordinary share and how much cost belongs to the preference shares because both will be sold separately. Okay, so I have to distribute this cost of 70,000 between the two of them. Okay, so remember one thing that over here, the cost distribution is always on the basis of market value. Okay, so it means I will distribute the cost according to the market value of these shares. Okay, like over here, if I talk about the market value, okay, so if I talk about ordinary shares, so you will receive two ordinary share against your one share, right? Against your one share. So right now I have 40,000 shares. So the ratio is two is to one. So it means against these 40,000 shares, I will be receiving 80,000 ordinary shares, right? 80,000 ordinary shares. And what is the market value of each ordinary share? That is five. So total market value will be 400,000 pound. 
okay then along with this i will be receiving some preference shares as well right so i will receive one preference shares against my one share in pink limited okay so i have got 40000 shares ratio is 1 is to 1 right so it means i will be receiving 40000 preference shares so 40000 preference shares and the value of each preference share is 8 so that is going to be 320000 the total market value will be 320000 so if i just take the total market value of uh, both the shares so that is going to be 720000 okay now on the basis of this 720000 we will distribute the cost okay now let's see how to distribute the cost so what was the original cost so originally i have purchased the shares of pink limited for 70000 right so this was my cost so now i need to allocate this cost between ordinary and preference shares on the basis of market value so let's see how to allocate okay so if i talk about ordinary share we are talking about allocation of cost so for ordinary share uh, my original cost is 70000 into multiplied by the market value of ordinary share so the total market value for ordinary share is 400000 divided by the total market value which is 70 720,000. So that is going to be 38888. Okay, so now let us allocate to preference shares. So for preference shares, again, I would say that my original cost is 70,000 multiplied by the market value of preference shares, which we have computed. That is 320,000 divided by the total market value, which is 720,000. So the cost for preference shares is going to be 31112. Okay, so that is how you will allocate the original cost between the two of them. So it means out of 70,000, 38888 belongs to ordinary share. Okay, this is the cost for ordinary share. And uh, the cost for preference share is 31112. So in the future, if I sell the ordinary shares, so from the DP, you will deduct the cost of 38888. And if I sell the preference shares in the future, so from the DP, I will be deducting a cost of 31112. Okay, now let's read from the notes. Okay, it says if one company controls another company, then following consideration may be received. So if there's a takeover, so you could receive consideration in the form of shares. Okay, so it could be share for share, or it could even be cash for shares. So against your shares, they might give you a cash payment. Okay, now for cash, remember one thing that if you're receiving cash as a consideration, so that will be immediately chargeable that will become immediately chargeable okay now the tax authorities hmrc they will assume that you have sold the shares to the company okay so if i'm receiving some cash okay so they will assume that there is a disposal of shares so let's suppose if i have received a cash of three thousand pound so they will assume that i have sold shares of three thousand to the company okay so it will become immediately chargeable okay uh then you could also receive consideration in the form of preference shares against your ordinary shares or you could even receive qcb qualifying corporate bonds now uh for qcb there are few special rules that we will cover later on okay so these are the type of consideration that you might receive in the exam question Okay, now it is possible that maybe he might also involve some mixed consideration. Maybe in the question, he might say that as a result of takeover, you will, you will be receiving shares, plus you might be receiving cash as well. So that we have to see that how to tackle such question in exam. Okay. 
Now just look at the table which is given below. So it says if you have received ordinary shear or preference shears, so what will be the text treatment? It says that new shears will be acquired at the cost of old shears, which we have already discussed, right? Then for cash, it says that gain or loss will be calculated, CGT charge, right? So if you are receiving consideration in the form of cash, so I told you that it will become immediately chargeable. Okay, they will assume that you have sold, you have sold the shares to the company. So if I'm receiving a cash of 3000, so they will assume that I have sold the shares of 3000 to the company. Okay, so you have to calculate the gain or loss in day one. Okay, then you could even receive consideration in the form of loan notes or QCB qualifying corporate bonds. Now for QCB, it says that gain or loss calculated you have to calculate the gain or loss, but that gain or loss will be frozen. Okay, so on QCB, you have to calculate the gain or loss, but your gain will freeze. Okay, and when in the future the QCB is sold, so then that gain will unfreeze. Okay, so we have some rules for QCB. So like I said, we will discuss it later on. Okay, then it says QCB exempt on disposal. Okay, now on sale of QCB, if there is any gain, so that is exempt. Okay, previously we were talking about uh, QCB when uh, previously uh, we were talking about the case where there's, uh, there's a takeover going on. Okay, and you have received QCB as a consideration. So I was talking about that gain that you have to calculate the gain on QCB, but that gain will be frozen. Okay, and when you will sell those QCB, so that frozen gain will unfreeze. Okay, now I'm talking talking about sale of QCB. Now you are you are selling the QCB, okay, uh, to a third party. So obviously, when you will sell that QCB to a third party, so again you have to perform your gain or loss calculation. But it is mentioned that that gain is exempt. Okay, the QCB is exempt. On sale of QCB, whatever gain uh, you will make, that is exempt from CGT. Okay. So uh, we will see this area again. Okay. Now let's look at a question. So uh, question number 15. It says, Mr. X have 80,000 shares in company A. Uh, which he purchased for 180,000. Okay, later company B takes over company A. Okay, so you have company A shares, right? So now this company is taken over by company B and consideration was received by Mr. X. Now let's look at the consideration. It says that he will receive five ordinary share for one ordinary share at the rate of 10 pound. So against your one share, you will receive five ordinary shares in the new company. Okay. Then second, uh, you will receive two preference share for one ordinary share at the rate of 5.3. So against your one ordinary share, you will receive two preference shares. And lastly, you will be receiving a cash of 180,000. Okay, so you have to calculate the text. So let's see. So we have certain step for dealing with question on takeover. So that will make your, um, and that, that will make it easy for you to solve the question. Yes, now in paper to paper transaction, first of all, we will check that what you have received, okay, what consideration you have received and what is the market value of that consideration. So that is your step number one. So in step number one, you will see that what consideration you have received and what is the market value of that consideration. So I will simply make three columns. I will make one uh, column for market value, one column of percentage and one column of allocation of cost. So on the basis of market value, we will allocate the cost, right? 
Okay, so what I have received as a result of takeover. So first of all, I have received ordinary shares. So against my one ordinary share, I'm receiving five ordinary shares in the new company, five ordinary shares. So right now, Mr. A is having how many shares? 80,000 shares, right? So against this 80,000 shares, uh, what is the ratio? Uh, that is five is to one, right? Five is to one. So 80,000 into five by one. That will give you number of shares that you will receive. Okay. Now multiplied by the market value of ordinary share. So the market value of each ordinary share is 10 pound. So into 10. So that is going to be 4 million. Okay, 4 million. All right, the next we have received preference shares. So for preference shares, he told us that we will receive two preference shares against our one ordinary share. So the ratio is two is to one. So right now we have got 80,000 shares and the ratio is two is to one, right? So into two divided by one. So it means I will be receiving 160,000 preference shares against my 80,000 ordinary shares. Okay, and the market value of each preference share is five pound, so into five. So total market value that is going to be eight hundred thousand, right? And apart from this, you are also receiving a cash of one eighty thousand. So I will take cash of one eighty thousand over here. Now let's do the total of this column let's say take total of this column so that is going to be four nine eight zero triple zero okay so now i know what i have received as a result of the takeover okay now what i have to do is i have to calculate the percentage of uh, uh, the market value i need to know the uh, percentage okay so if i talk about ordinary share so i need to know the um, market value in terms of percentage for ordinary share so for ordinary share the market value is 400000 so if i ask you to calculate uh, the percentage uh, of, uh, of ordinary share so that you can easily calculate, right? You know the uh, market value of ordinary share 400,000 divided by the total market value, which is 4980000 into 100. Okay, so 400,000 divided by 4980000 into 100. So that will give you the percentage for ordinary share, which is going to be 80%. Now, for preference shares, you would say that the market value of preference share is 800,000 divided by the total market value, which is 4980000 into 100. Okay, so 800,000 divided by 4980000 into 100. That's going to be 16%. Now for cash, you would say that it will be 180,000 divided by 4980000 into 100. So 180 divided by 4980 into uh, 000 into 100. That is going to be 4%. Okay, so that is 100%. Okay, now what you can do is on the basis of these percentages, you can allocate the cost. Okay, you can allocate the cost. So what was the original cost of those shares? So Mr. X purchased 80,000 shares for how much? 180,000. So that was the original cost, right? So I just need to allocate this original cost of 180,000. Okay, so you will just multiply with the percentages. 
Okay, so for ordinary shear, the percentage is 80%, right? So just take 80% of 180,000. So 80% of 180,000, that will be 144,000. So this is the cost of ordinary shares. Now for preference shares, you will take 16% of 180,000. 16% of 180,000. That will be 28800. Now for cash, you will take 4% of 180,000. That will be 7200. Okay, so that is how you have to allocate the cost. So, so in step number one, you have, what you have to do is, you will just see that what consideration you are receiving. What is the market value of that consideration? And on the basis of market value, you will simply allocate the cost. Okay, so you can make three columns for that. You will make one column for market value, percentage, and allocation of cost. Okay. Okay, now look over here very carefully. Okay, now over here you have received a cash of 180,000, right? 180,000. Okay. Now this is more than 3,000. Okay, we will study the rule for cash, but right now just remember one thing that this cash is actually more than 3,000. Right, this is greater than 3,000. Okay. So there will be a part disposal calculation. Okay, so if the cash which you are receiving, if it is greater than 3,000, so therefore there will be a part disposal calculation. Now, if it is less than 3,000, uh, what will happen? So that we will see later on. Okay. So right now, they will assume that uh, when you are receiving the cash and if it is greater than 3,000, so HMRC will assume that you have actually sold the shares for 180,000, okay? So like I said, that when you receive cash as a consideration, so that is immediately chargeable to capital gain, okay? So they will assume that you have actually sold the shares of 180,000. So in the DP, you will take cash received. Okay, so we are talking about cash consideration. Okay, so in your disposal proceed, you will simply take your cash received. So they will assume that you have actually sold your shares for 180,000. Now minus the cost. So how much cost is allocated to cash? So that we have already done, right? So 7,200, right? That is allocated to cash. So minus 7,200, that will give you with your chargeable gain. Chargeable gain will be 172,800. Now after that, obviously you will minus your annual exemption if it is available. So you will be deducting annual exemption of 12,000. So taxable gain will be one six zero eight hundred. Okay, now over here I have not applied part disposal formula because while allocating the cost, okay, that that was already applied. Okay. So no need to apply your part disposal formula again. Okay, so for cash, just remember one thing, that if you're receiving cash and if it is greater than 3,000, so that will be immediately chargeable to tax. Okay, so what you have to do is, in your DP, you will simply take cash you see, minus the cost which is allocated to cost. Uh, sorry, minus the cost which is allocated to cash. Okay, 